Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Exposing the Narcissist. Before we begin, I would like to give a shout out to my latest channel members, Balendu, Avaru and Juanita Jouet. Thank you for both deciding to support my channel. It is greatly appreciated. Okay, today I want to look at a checklist that the narcissist uses to pick their targets. Their targets would be those people they want to get close to. This can include friendships, romantic relationships, work relationships, and certain family relationships. There is no doubt that the covert narcissist especially can be very particular about who they allow in their space or spend time with. So of course, they have a criterion as to who is allowed close to them and those that will always be kept at a distance. We already know that they go about securing these targets with their infamous love bombing. But before they make such an investment, what motivates them to choose that person? So today I have five things that the narcissist considers when choosing who to get close to. Unfortunately, we also know that it is those who are closest to the narcissist who ends up becoming their victims. In time, they become the narcissist's number one enemy because everything that the narcissist initially claimed to love about you is actually what they end up despising the most. So although you may have initially thought that the narcissist chose you as a friend, partner or general companion because they like you, in time you find out that it is the opposite that applies. But that takes us into the number one criteria for when a narcissist chooses a target and that is empathy. Your ability and desire to love and care for others is essential. And narcissists believe that people with empathy are easier to manipulate and control. In addition, because narcissists lack empathy, they are instinctively drawn to people who have empathy. But at the same time, they hate the fact that you are a genuine, loving, caring, empathetic individual because that means you are truly able to enjoy life and find happiness. And this is everything that the narcissist cannot be or have. So they grow to hate you for that because in their minds, they are thinking, how dare you be and have something that they can't. The narcissist would prefer if you were faking it like they do they would prefer that you were miserable like they are. Therefore, the only thing left for the narcissist to do is make your life a miserable hell to wipe the light from your life and the smile from your face. But empathy, although they despise us for it, is usually the number one thing that draws a narcissist to a target. The second criteria the narcissist uses to choose their targets is your respect for them. If the narcissist realizes that you think highly of them and have bought into their fake image, not only are you a prime target, but an easy one at that. Because the narcissist knows they have your trust, so now they need to take it to the next stage or look at the next criteria which is your assets. What is it apart from your empathy that the narcissist can gain from having you in their life? Is it money, sex, connections, drugs, a place to live, food to eat? What more can you give to the narcissist to make it worth their world? The narcissist knows they have your trust and respect, but they always want more. That is why they assess your resources when it comes to deciding who to get close to. A fourth criteria is your boundaries or limits. How far can the narcissist go before you put your foot down? Or are you too kind or too weak to even tell them no? 
or are you so in awe with them that they can do no wrong? They also look at whether or not you are quick to believe and accept their excuses. Their excuses for being late, their excuses for not being able to help, their excuses for letting you down for the hundredth time. They check to see how much persuasion is needed to get what they want from you. The narcissist wants to know that they are able to run rings around you and that you do not complain about it. Testing your boundaries and telling lies are all little manipulation techniques that the narcissist does to test their potential targets. The fifth criteria is something I have talked about a few times and it pertains more to the covert narcissist and it is how private you are. Are you someone that tells any and everyone your business or are you more reserved with certain aspects of your life? The covert narcissist prefers the latter as they believe whatever happens at home should stay at home. This is something they indoctrinate into their partners and children so that their evil two-faced nature is not exposed. So the narcissist tries their best to choose people who will be able to keep the secrets of the narcissist. Assessing these different areas confirms to the narcissist how much control they will be able to have over you and how much you care about them. Depending on how much you meet their criteria, the closer the narcissist will want to be with you in order to take advantage of you. The less you meet, you are more likely to be kept at a distance. Narcissists want to be surrounded with people they can control or who have bought into that fake image that they have created. They want people who will believe them and side with them. They want people who will bend over backwards for them and not challenge or criticize them. They want people who have influential contacts and resources that they can benefit from. For the narcissist, at the end of the day, it is all about them and how they can benefit from the people around them while giving little in return. But this is why they end up only having a very small circle of friends or none at all, as their demands are unfair and one-sided. Never is it really about what they can do for you, but what you can do for them. That is it for today, but if there is any other criteria that I missed, please do share them and your thoughts on today's episode in the comments section below. And as always, have a blessed week, everyone.